but actually, before I get there, I just realized something when I heard that beat. For those of you that don't know Trevor, say hi, Trevor. Um, Trevor is our running our in-house print marketing company. I think most everybody knows we bought a full-scale production printing press. It's in the new office suites across the way. And so he's negotiating all of our deals with Kelly Paper this week. And he should be ready to start getting stuff into production for you um, in the next five to seven days. And so the thinking behind this was, you know, we work with the Michael Lewis marketing suite now, and their prices are pretty good. With the big, like, 11 by 17 glossies, you pay about 90 cents for those from those guys for full bleed. Um, we're still negotiating the price, so this is not in stone, but we're looking at being able to provide the same thing with no minimum quantity for about half the price. Um, and same day to next day turn. So we're really excited to be able to do that because now you can either save the money or double your marketing effort for the same money, right? So. We're working on the mailing part too. Trevor is applying for a bulk mail stamp so that we can just do that. And so we're working it all out. There'll be a few kinks to work through, but we'll get there quickly. So let's look at the first quarter. What, what do y'all feel? What, what's happening in the market? You had 100 people through an open house. Multiple offers. What else? Short escrows. Low inventory, lots of cash deals, no appraisal contingencies. OK, so what is all of those, all those things, what color flags are going up the pole? Red. Why? Because it can't last forever. So how long do we expect it to last? Well, so, so here's the question. What happens in the United States in November? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, ca we call them the, 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 com the country's mascot, right? Yeah. So we're, we're going to go through an election. So the question I would ask is this. Does our government have tools that they can use to sustain the economy even when the economy is not sustaining itself? Okay. Do they? Yeah. Yes or yes? Yes. Yeah. Are they currently using those tools? Oh, well, now only half of you started using it. So, say yes. Who thinks yes, they're using them? Yes, yeah. Who thinks no, they're not, and everything we're seeing right now is totally natural? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, for those of you that think they are, they are. And the, what's the number one tool that the government uses to keep the economy going? Rates. rates. And where are rates? Low. How low? Bottom. They can't get much lower unless they start paying you money to borrow money, right? right? Which in other nations, is that happening? Yeah. Yes. So we're seeing some interesting things happen economically. Um, I was reading an article, and, and the, the fact check is still out on the article, um, about the new yuan that China is launching tomorrow, actually, which will be in about 12 hours there. It's their new currency. Okay, so with their new currency, what they've said is it's a gold-backed currency. What's that mean? That they actually have enough gold in their reserves to cover all the paper they're going to issue. This is a foreign concept to us here in the U.S. Because we just print paper now, right? And so what, what I understand, and this is the part that's out for the fact check, is because we don't have a gold standard behind our currency, and China already has trillions of US dollars, they've said they will not allow their new currency to be traded for US dollars. What's that mean to you? Who knows? Right? Find out. So those are the things that you want to pay attention to, because the world is looking at our economy and saying, those guys are doing all right, while the rest of the world is kind of getting a little shaky. I wonder what's going on. And then we see what's happening in the real estate market, and it kind of feels like um, a slow motion replay of 2005 and six, doesn't it? It's not, we don't have quite the velocity that we had, but it feels like a lot of the same things are happening, right? So do we get excited about that or do we get bummed out about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just kind of is. There, there are no good or bad real estate markets, they're just the right and the wrong tactics for the current market. And I would remember that because what my job is and what Jim's job is and Brad's job 
is to help you all understand what are the right tactics for today's market and what are the right tactics for the market we're coming into. Yeah? Okay. So let's talk a little bit about today's market. So do we believe that we are... Um, I'm here scribing for you non-high seats. All right. Thank you. So do we believe that we are at the mercy of the market or that we make the market? So, okay, so in this world, we believe that we make the market. The rest of the real estate world will let them live in their delusion that they're at the mercy of the market, okay? Here's what I mean by that. When I look at our language of real estate, and I see, we're going to see a couple things here. We're going to see what the MLS does. We're going to see what Keller Williams Carmel Valley does. And then we're going to look at the difference. And the difference here in terms of units, and we're going to do units sold. So these are buyers and sellers that actually made it to the closing table and changed ownership. The MLS, are they up or down year to date? Have we sold more homes or less homes than the same time period last year? Down, down about 5%. Okay. Now, when we look at the volume, so this is dollar volume sold. In the MLS, are we up or down? How about down 3%? Now, why is dollar volume down less than units? What does that automatically tell you? What's up? Prices are higher this year, right? Okay. Now, when we look at the, the amount of listings coming to the market, so we'll call this new listings. Is that, or do we have more or less inventory coming onto the market than we had last year? Less, right? That's a pretty easy thing to answer. So we're down about 5% in new inventory. But now let's look at new under contracts. Where's that at? Are we up or down here? We're up about 5% for the MLS, OK? So we have fewer listings coming to market at higher prices. Contracts written are up, but units closed are down. So is there typically a lag between the time it goes in contract and the time it becomes a closed escrow? Say so yes, yeah, right? So now when we look at what y'all are doing here in, for KWCV, units sold, are you guys up or down over where you were last year? Up. So you're up 10%. So your difference is 15% better than the market. Is that good? Yeah. That's good. Why, why do buyers and sellers care? Well, because while everybody else is going backwards, y'all are going forwards, right? So you're, you're saying that we get that the market's down, but we're just going to kick it in the ankle and move forward anyways. Right? Y'all are going to go take market share. You're going to put deals in escrow. Now, dollar volume, are you up or down? Up. And are you up or down more or less than 10%? More. OK, now, if you're up more than 10%, what's that tell you? Price that your price is up. So how much do we expect it should be up? About 2%. So year over year, you're up 24%. So what's that tell you? Yeah, that you guys are beating the market by 27% in terms of dollar volume and 15% in terms of units. So what's that say? This office is doing higher price property. That you guys are taking on, that not only are you bringing more property to market and getting it closed, but you're bringing much higher price property to market and getting it closed than you were in the same time period last year. Now let's look at listing inventory, because it, let's just be honest. What's the one thing that really drives the market right now? Listings. listings. He who has, or he or she who has the listings rules the world right at the moment, right? What's that? Money it's money in the bank if you got a listing. So y'all are up 4% over the same time period last year. So you're beating the market by 9% in the number of new listings that you're bringing to the market. Why does that matter? Listings attract buyers. Listings attract buyers. Do listings attract other listings? Yes. 
And what, what kind of buyers do listings attract? Just buyers for that listing? Or buyers for every listing that our company has? All of them, right? So when you list your house, you want to list it where? With, it, with the agent or company that has the most inventory, right? All right. So is this a story that y'all can use on your listing appointments, I hope? Yep. You're, you're outpacing the market really across the board. So let's look at what the market's doing as a, as a total. So SDAR says, negative housing headlines should be read with calm or skepticism, not alarm. Now, is it interesting that that's how they start? <laughs> Why do you think they start there? To, I mean, we, how many of y'all were doing this in 2005 and six? Okay, do you guys remember sitting in the office meetings or hearing the, the news that we were in a housing bubble and everybody going, hey, check out my new Benz, I just leased it? <laughs> it's awesome, it's only 850 a month? Oh, by the way, the housing bubble thing, hogwash, right? That's, the association's job is to bring us the facts. At the same time, does it benefit them to have high morale or low morale? High morale, right? Because they're, how do they make their money? Which, by the way, they're a for-profit company. Dues? Yeah, and if people are thinking the market's going to tank, what do they not pay? Okay, so these, look for them to be the last people to blow the whistle on, guess what, we just went into a recession. So, just an aside. National housing trends like the steady rise in home price and decline in inventory should certainly be observed with care, but tracking wider economic conditions is also necessary. Buyers want to get into the market, but unlike the rising price sales environment of 10 years ago, people are not diving headlong into risky mortgages or uncomfortable situations. This carefulness should be celebrated, not feared. Right? Is that fair? Now, at the same time, I did see the commercial this weekend for Navy Fed. Who's, who knows where I'm going? No money down, no credit score requirement, just document your income and you got a mortgage all the way up to a million bucks. And, and they're not the only one. So the good news is for the most part, it, a lot of buyers are paying attention to that and buyers are still looking at the values and they're not getting too crazy and that when we are seeing properties run way up over the list price, what are they, how are they typically closing? With cash. So there's a lot more liquidity in our market than there was 10 years ago. Because 10 years ago, how were they all closing? 100%, no, no income, no asset, or 80-20, or 80-10-10, yeah. All right, closed sales, you know what, I'm gonna skip the rest of this part. Let's go to employment. SDR says employment figures are positive, wages are going up, and employers are hiring. It's all good news. Consumers are holding for the right deal. How many of you have a buyer that you've watched them leave $100,000 on the table waiting for the last six months to a year for the right deal to come up? Right. Yeah, just about everybody in the room. So consumers are holding for the right deal even in the face of extremely low mortgage rates. As seller and builder confidence increases, we should see more activity in Q2 to 2016. So let's talk about new construction starts for a moment. Where are we versus historical new construction starts right now? Are we higher or lower than the all-time averages? How much lower? So we're at about 50% of our historical averages nationwide. That's not just San Diego. San Diego is even lower. And so what that tells us, and, and Gary talked about this in the vision speech, is that we're, we're having a hard time with skilled labor right now. Because what happened is during the recession, what happened to all of the tradespeople? They went and did other things. They became aircraft mechanics or cell phone engineers, or they moved to North Dakota and drilled for oil, right? And so the, the return of skilled labor and skilled trades to the home building workforce. How many of you have recently tried to get like a, maybe a landscape contractor over to your house to look at something? And they're three, four, five, six weeks out just to come give you a, a bid. That's, that should tell, illustrate the story of skilled labor is hard to come by, which is going to slow down building starts, which what's the good news about slowing down building starts? 
it's going to keep the inventory lower and it's going to delay the inevitable rollover in price. All right. So, but if an inventory stays, so the second quarter tends to rank as the best time to list a home for sale in San Diego. I would probably write that down, highlight it, post it on Facebook, share it with my clients, email it out, and talk about it over and over and over. The second quarter tends to rank as the best time to list a home for sale in San Diego. But if inventory stays low, it'll be difficult to sustain sales increases in year-over-year -year comparisons. Pricing, prices are seemingly not so high as to stall the market completely. However, demand is present, but an abundance of choice is not, and therein lies the rub. So what do they mean there? Are there a lot of people that want to buy houses? Yes. Are there a fair number of people that can afford to buy houses? Yes. How many choices do those people have? Not a, not a whole bunch. OK. So let's move into new listings. You know, historically, we're, we see around 3,000 homes a month come to market. Last month, we had 3,111 single families. 1,465 uh, attached. That's about a 10% swing under what we would normally expect to see. So that, that means one in 10 homes that would have come to market last year didn't come to market this year. I always like to quantify it that way when I'm working with a buyer or seller. One in 10 homes that would have been on the market that you would have been ha had as an option last year is not an option this year, okay? When we look at Average sales price. This is the number that, I, to me, kind of tells the tale of the tape on why we're seeing. We're, does anybody else feel like we're stalled a little bit in terms of that middle tier of pricing? Average sales price for a single family residence in San Diego County last month, $699,264. That's ridiculous. Keep in mind, this is the average single family home. And this is the whole county, including the $300,000 ones in Chula Vista. So when you're at a market average of $699,264, what color flag just went up the pole? Red. Okay. Or at least a yellow one. If you don't like red, it's at least yellow. Attached, 431,817. That means your average condo, townhome, or attached dwelling in San Diego is 431,000. Um, that's up about 6.5% over the same time period last year. So what's the story there? What's this, when you look at those prices, what's the story? Selection's low, rents are up. People are sick of renting for more than they can buy a house for. Yeah, people are sick of renting for significantly more than they could buy a house for, right? Now, I remember when I started as team leader here three years ago, our average sales price was in the high 400s for a single family. So that means in the last two years, you've picked up almost 60% in value. That's, that's something to just pay attention to. What percentage is up from last year? From last year, it's up uh, six and a half on attached, 2.1 on detached. Okay. Now, when we look at percent of original list price received, what, and I don't know that y'all can really see this line and make it out, but historically, we expect that February is going to give us a higher percent of original list price than January, and that March will give us a higher than February. Why? Because people don't like to list their homes over Christmas. People don't like to list their homes over Christmas, even less than listing them, they don't like to buy them. Because when do most people want to make a move? Right about now, after they do their taxes and they get their refund for their down payment in the low, in the low entry what? level markets. They don't care. I got news for you guys. Who's got that code? In other parts of the county, they do get tax refunds. <laughs> yeah. Got 30 grand flying out the door tonight. Yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate that in my refund. No I'm kidding. So, uh, here's the trend though that I want you to that I want you to notice. Last month we were at a 12 month high for list price original list price to final sold price. So remember in the last Six months, we've watched that trend down and down and down and down, where sellers were getting further apart from what they wanted. Well, we've turned the corner and we're going back the other direction. So what's that tell you? Se seasonality is alive and well. We expect that coming into the summer, sellers are going to be able to get closer to their asking price because there's more velocity in that market. 
So right now, sellers are at 97.2%. What's the historical high? Like in recent time, last two years, what's the historical high? It was like, it was like 99.1. So if we're at 97.2 and in the last two years we've been at 99.1, what does that tell us? Still room to go. There's still room to go. And if, it, if inventory is half of what it was when sellers were at 99.1, what does that tell us? They're, they are trying to go for more. What, here's what it tells me. When price, what, what was the big difference when, in June of 2013 when we hit 99.1 to today? What was the average sales price? In, in June of 13, it was probably close to 590, 580. So you've got a sales price that is a, almost $100,000 higher today so what's that mean? What what's that going to do to list price to sales price? Buyers aren't going to push as much. Now, also, how many of you have sellers that are listing at a higher price today than they ever would have considered in the past, and they're trying to hit a home run with every sale? Okay. So some, I I think comparatively, even though the numbers are two percentage points apart, it feels probably about the same as it did back then. Looking at attached, they're at ninety-seven point seven percent. Of, of their original asking price. What, do you guys know what the high was in, it was actually in the same time, June of 2013, what was the high for attached homes? List to sale. Why, it was 101 and a half. So they're still four points under where they were. So this, the moral of the story here is that, that we're shifting back into a summer seller's market where sellers are gonna be able to play the name your price game. Days on market, this one jumps off the page at me. Last month, your average single family home sat on the market 37 days before sale. Your average attached home only 31. And that 31 day number represents a 12 month low. Actually, that represents a cycle low. So what's a cycle low? Well, since the last bust, we're in an up cycle. This is the lowest number on days on market that we've been at in this up cycle. So it's probably less, more like maybe even 10. So 31 days on market, attached, 37 detached. That's significant. Because if days on market is coming down, list to sale is coming up, what's that tell us for sellers? They're going to be able to name their price. Now what's that tell us if we're working with buyers? Be ready, right? Be ready to play ball. Put your best foot forward right up front. Um, inventory of homes for sale. We are nearing back down towards the 4,500 mark. We peaked at the bottom in December at 44,455. As of April 1, we had 4,560 homes on the market. Now, how many homes do we typically sell in a month? between 3,000, 2,800 and 3,100. So if we sell that many every month and we only have 4,500 on the market, what's that tell you? We got pretty low inventory to the tune of, how about 2.2 months in detached and 1.6 months in attached, uh, both of which are cycle lows. Say again, 2.2? 2.2 months of detached, 1.6 months of attached. Both, both of those are cycle lows. So what cycle lows have we seen so far? We've seen a cycle high on what? Average sales price. We've seen a cycle low on days on market. We've seen a cycle low on inventory. Bless you. Just things to take note of, right? OK, let's move to the next thing. Let's look at. Um, List a sales price as we move up in price points. Where did I lose my marker? So original list price to final sold price. So if we go to 250 and under, 
all the way to 125 and up. And in the middle here, we're going to go 1 to 125, 750 to 1. You don't think they can read my? Oh, oh. Look at that. All right, 250 to 500. All right. So when I look at this, it kind of tells me an interesting story. When I look at original list price to final sold price, 250 and below, where do you think it is? If the, the average is what, 97.1? Yeah. Where do you think they are? 72. Why? Who's buying $250,000 houses? First time buyers and investors. Probably more investors than first time buyers. Okay. Now, 250 to 500, this jumps way up to 97.3. 500 to 750, you're at 97.2. 750 to a million, you're at 96.5. Uh, a million to a million 250, you're at 94.8. And a million two fifty and up, you're at ninety four even. What'd you just learn? That this is kind of your five hundred. This is your sweet spot. Now let's look at this. Same price bands, days on market. Average is seventy. Thirty five. 35, 40, 44, 61. What's that tell you? The sweet, the sweet spot is kind of staying the same. Now here's the interesting thing when we look at inventory. Inventory under 215,000 down 25%. Inventory 250 to 500, down 38.1%. Inventory 500 to 750, down 18%. Inventory 750 to a million, down 3.2%. Inventory a million to a million 250, down 4.8%. And inventory 1.25 and above, up 12.7%. What's the story? Oversaturated on that. I that, so that. are there a lot of high-end sellers that have just come to market this year because they think they can finally get their price? Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. and, the, and their price is like, Crazy. it's a Fantasia land price? Yes. And I don't mean the singer from American Idol. I mean the place in Disneyland where dreams don't come true. So month, month supply of inventory, if we just correlate this, here you're at 3.9. Here you're one two, one eight, two eight, three six, seven one. Okay. So here's the interesting thing. Even though they're up twelve point seven percent, is that a buyer's market in luxury or no? No. It's still a balanced market. Seven months is the top end ceiling for a balanced market. Everywhere else it's a it's a seller's market. And in through here. I call that an extreme seller's market. So if you have a listing right now and your listing is sitting on the market and you're not getting showings or offers, what should you know? What, what should you know? Maybe you forgot to hit submit on MLS, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> I did hit the on the well, okay. <laughs> I checked it. It was on Zillow and everything. No. So the tail of the tape here is if you're working with a seller and that listing isn't selling, you've got either a pricing or a presentation issue, and it's not a market issue, right? If you're working with a buyer, what, what do we need to know for buyers? They got, they got to be aggressive. They got to put their best foot forward right up front. They got to be ironclad. So what does that look like? Mm 
what is a, a buyer, let's say that they're an FHA buyer doing 3.5% down, looking at you know, a $450,000 house. What should that buyer be prepared to do? List their home. Yeah, if they got to sell, they, if they need to sell to buy, they need to get a, that deal locked up long before. What else? Yep. And they probably need to be prepared to pay over the appraised value and make up the difference in cash. Right? Y'all understand that with, so, Back in 2005 and six, when we needed an appraisal, how did we get it? <laughs> We'd call and go, hey, Mr. Appraiser that does all my appraisals, will you give, come give me an appraisal on this property at this price? And then they would call you and they'd go, I'm having a hard time making up value on this one, can you help me? And you'd work together and put it together. Well, then Dodd-Frank comes along and says, no more of that. Now the lender and the agents can't talk to the appraiser and we're going to follow this new thing called the HVCC, which is what? Hands off. Home valuate, yeah, hand, the hands off home valuation <laughs> code of conduct. And so what that says is now Lynn, as the lender, has to call an AMC or an appraisal management company, that, and this disinterested third party goes out and picks the appraiser. All right? So with that change, what do you think happened in the industry? Appraisal, the ability for appraisers to make the number probably went down a little bit. I'm surprised none of you guys know this. What happened is all the big lenders went out and, and went to their old appraisers and went, remember Ben, we used to do all that business together? I just started my own AMC. Will you come work for it? And they just started their own AMCs and then had the same relationship they had 10 years ago and created the same problems. Right? I can't believe you guys didn't know that. Learn something new every day. So now what happens is the CFPB comes along and says, wait a minute, you guys are doing the same thing you did. You're just making an end run around and calling it an AMC. We got the solution for this. Then, Mr. Appraiser, if you overinflate the value of a property for your AMC, you are now personally liable to buy that loan back if it defaults. Sign here. And so that was a change that happened, what, late last year? So now if the appraiser goes in, and the appraiser brings in some home run value on a property and the loan defaults, what happens? They literally get a buyback for the entire loan. So do you think that that has made your appraisers a little bit trigger shy? Or a lot trigger shy? So have you seen that in the last eight months as a big change that appraisers are, appraisals are harder to come by? So maybe it's not that them paying above the appraised value is really them overpaying. It's them paying above what the appraiser is comfortable saying, well, if it's not really worth that, I'll buy it back. Because that's what they're having to say when they're doing the appraisals. It's a guaranteed price. It's a guaranteed price. All right, is, this good, is that good stuff to know for when you're working with buyers and sellers? All right, let's look at how some of y'all are doing in terms of, we, actually, we'll start at the county level. And to me, this is interesting. We track. Um, a lot of things. But we always track how we're doing versus our competition. What, why do we care about that? Success leaves clues. Success leaves clues. Why else? It's part of our story. What's it, but I mean, what's it matter? If, if Coldwell Banker is ahead by 10% and we're ahead by 10%, what's it matter? It, show, it shows you who's working harder, who's doing a better job. What else? It shows you who has the inventory. Does it show you um, where agents are being trained to do the business and to insulate their business from any market, right? So if we look at, there's really four, you can call it five major players in our market. So there's KW, there's Coldwell Banker, there's Berkshire Hathaway, there's Sotheby's, and there's Century 21. Okay? Century 21, year to date, has sold 651 homes for a total of 290 million, 
uh, 877, whatever it is, okay? But call it 290 million. This represents a decrease of 8.2% over last year, and here a decrease of 1.6%. What's that tell you about C21 agents? They're, they're just kind of keeping pace with the market. They've done 651 year to date. Sotheby's, they're at 669 for a total of 574 million. That represents a 4.7% increase and a half a percent decrease in their dollar volume. What's that tell you about Sotheby's agents? They're, they're taking, well, this is closed, so it tells me that they're taking higher price listings than the C21 agents. And that they've, they've been recruiting. They've brought a lot of agents in. But generally, are they beating the market by a little bit? Yeah, right? So something's, go, something's going right over there. So Berkshire Hathaway, they're at 899 units uh, and 700 million in volume. That represents a decrease of 10.7% and a decrease of 11.3% here. What's that tell you? Honestly, they are. that is what it is. I mean, if, you, if all you did was take Ann Brazolis, um, who, are, who are the other couple big ones that moved? All of them. Yeah, yeah, two or three of the big ones that left here and went here, that probably represents this and this. Kind of interesting. Coldwell Banker, 1,316 units year to date for 768 million. That's a decrease of 10.8%. And here, a decrease of 11%. What's that tell you? They're, they're, they're kind of trailing, they're trailing the market by about five points, okay? Keller Williams, 1,403 homes sold year to date, 761,357,000. That represents a 12.6% increase there and a 22.2% increase there. What's the story? Agents are moving this way, and the agents that we have are, are outperforming their own production from the same time period last year, right? And it, does anybody believe that that might be because we have these types of conversations around what's happening in the market and what you should be doing and how you should be communicating that to your client? You know what's funny about this number, too? Interesting. These two companies are spending a jillion dollars in print ads in the San Diego Union Tribune and the San Diego Business Journal saying that they're number one. And nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's true. They we don't care. I mean, because, I, mean I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would tell all of you that you should have this when you go on your listening presentation in case it comes up. Well, you know, Berkshire Hathaway is telling us they're the number one residential real estate brokerage in San Diego. So really, they're just the MLS. Just point that out. Well, you can have statistics to say anything you want. I mean, that could be per agent. Well, yeah, yeah. We can all be number one at anything. Would we agree? Yeah. Okay. And, and what we know is Sotheby's is saying they're the fastest growing real estate company in San Diego County. Is that true? Yep. Nope. No. I don't know. Berkshire Hathaway and Coble Banker, they, they report all their numbers under one broker. We don't. We report under, I don't know, eight ten, different, ten ten different, different brokers. brokers. Right? But if you combine by brand, those are the numbers you get. Interesting. Give it three more months. Yeah. They're really good. So here, here's the key is just know that you all make up the best sales force in San Diego County, period, end of story. It's an IQ test. 
whether or not sellers should list their house with you. And if you walk into the listing appointment with that mindset, guess what's going to happen? Are you going to get the listing? Yeah. yeah. So let's look at who that's working for. And, well, and I would also encourage you all to tell that story with your fellow agents from those other companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I'm, I'm talking to all my friends at Berkshire Hathaway, going, dude, what's going on over there? I mean, you got agents leaving, your, your, your numbers are off 10% year over year in, in units and 11% in volume. I mean, and it's okay because you're right in line with Cobalt Banker and, and, and with Cobalt Banker and Sotheby's, but you know, ours are up 12% and 22%. Would you like to know why? But, and, and what does that do for you all when you have that conversation with them? Get, get them in front of us and they'll shine, sign up under you for profit share. I, Great reason to be here. To me, if I, I wouldn't go on a listing appointment without talking about this. Yeah. I would talk about this on every listing appointment. Yeah. Email it. Yeah, okay. June, we email it out. <laughs> 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 All right, let's look, at, um, let's look at how you guys did. We'll do top 20, a couple of awards, and then I'll draw, and then you're free to go. Home runs. What's a home run? Escrow, a listing, and a closing all in the same month. Ready? Adam Lowe, Anne-Marie McCormick, Bobby Martins, Bruce Levine Holmes, the Heller Real Estate Group, Christina Gregory, David Domangos, David Rudd, Don Lewis, Deanne Motzenbacher, Don Pelletier, Freddie Raboni, Jack Campbell team, Jimmy Goulart, John Rorig, Casey Miller, Cat Tennis, and the tennis team, Kim Tran, Kip Bocher, Louis Ortiz, Miguel Nunez, Paul and Emily Hervo, Petra Strecker, Richard Stone, Sean and Stephanie Magaha, Sherry Sangin, Steve Cardell, and Vanessa Jackson. Give them a hand. Home, home run. So one listing, one sale, one closing, all in the same month. If you feel like your name should have been called and it wasn't called, see Jude. <laughs> and Jude's going to say, Fred can handle that for you. <laughs> Sorry, Fred. <laughs> All right, first closing with our office. Um, Jennifer Nino, Naraya Cole, congratulations. Uh, uh, Ryan Elder and Vanessa Jackson. So congratulations to them. And then first listing with our office, Carrie Lee Stone, Charles Fultz. Ryan Matzenbacher. Uh, Tiffany Yaculo and Wendy Piero. I don't see that I'm here. All right, top 20, close volume. Who's number one? <laughs> the Heller team. That a good month. 10.237 million closed last month. You know, where I'm from, that's a great year. <laughs> that's like 100 transactions. <laughs> Not kidding. I wish I was. <laughs> Richard Stone, second place, 6.991 million. The Hervo team, third place, 6.901 million. Kip Bocher, 6.6. .6. Louis Ortiz, 6.1. And Anne Marie McCormick, 4.285. To be in the top five last month, you had to do 6 million in a month. It's a 30 million, oh wait, no, it's a $72 million pace. It's healthy competition. Um, Kindred, 4.275, Lewis Team, 4.1, Jack Campbell, 3.1, Adam Lowe, 3, Ron and Eileen, 2.9, Cornerstone, 2.76, Daniel and Sherry, 2.383, John Rorig, 2.3, Petra, 2.0, Lookup, 2.0, Bobby, 1.8, Casey, 1.5, Clara, 1.5, and Vanessa Jackson, 1.332. Uh, it's, it's healthy competition when you've got to make 40 grand in one month to be in the top 20. Just to put that in perspective, that's pretty cool. You guys are kicking butt. Let's look at written volume. Um, who's number one? They had a good month, right? <laughs> you, I always tell Aaron that when he's not here and you guys don't get number one, everybody cheers like twice as loud. <laughs> um, Heller, written volume, 13.793 million last month. Hervo, 11.157. Cornerstone Investment Group, 8.750. Kip Bocher, 6.5. Louis Ortiz, 6.7. Uh, Don Pelletier, 567. Kindred, 552. Richard Stone, 511. Adam Lowe, 507. Okay, so to be in the top 10, you had to do 5 million last month. It's crazy. Anne Marie, 45. 
Don Lewis team 3.5, uh, Motson Properties 3.09, Dave Domingos 3.06, Tennis Team 3.06, Stacy and Monica 2.94, Steve Cuddell 2.83, Bobby Martins 2.40, Jack Campbell 1.68, 1.68, Galena 1.63, and Joni Burnett 1.514. It's pretty good top 20. Listings taken. Who's number one? Yeah, they, they won the hat trick last month. 22 new listings taken last month. Uh, Hervo team with 12. Don Pelletier group with five. Kit Bocher, Steve Cadell, Freddie Raboni, all with four. Kindred Real Estate, Richard Stone, Don Lewis, and Bruce Levine Holmes with three. Louis Ortiz, Adam Lowe, Dave Domangos, the tennis team, Joni Burnett, Jack Campbell, Christina Gregory, Rose Wilkins, Sean McGaha, and Corey Adamitis all with two. Give them a hand. All right, y'all are doing a phenomenal job. I, I really, oh, two more. two more. Anybody else cards? Thank you. Was that a second one, Hinman? <laughs> uh, customer experience registration. You got one? You know what, I don't. Okay, go on, last call. Uh-oh. There's one. Jumped right out. Nice. <laughs> Stephanie Magaha. How about we get Stephanie a box of cards instead? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want to waste them on this. All right. Jude, how many of these can I give away? Okay. All right. Somebody else is picking. Pick my own. Pick my own. Sean Patrick Becky. Right. Uh-oh. Sean just got voted off the island. Right under the bus. Jackie Rosenson? All right, Jackie's gone too. Oh, man. Did you just need to tell everybody she sold her list and then she left? Blanca? Where? Oh, there you are. Huh. All right. How many? Wait, that's only two. One more. Well, there's uh, Lacey Bybee. All right. I'm mixing. So you, you must have written yours on there. Oh, there you go. Nice. There you go. All right, I'm doing one more. No, you count. Steve, you. There you go. Where's it? There he is. All right. Thank you guys very much. Um, seriously, y'all closed quarter one phenomenally. And I'm excited to see what you do in the second quarter. Year to date, you guys have already sold over $300 million worth of real estate just out of this office. Um, it's amazing what y'all are doing. So I can't wait to see what you do in the next quarter. See you in a week.